Disclosures 101. Practices of an informed disclosure. So maraming nakakarinig sa atin, ano? may disclosure na lumabas, itong disclo may disclosure si ganitong company. So ano bang ibig sabihin ng disclosure na yan? And paano ba natin magagamit ang mga disclosures to our trading advantage? So I have two resource speakers this afternoon that will discuss everything we need to know about disclosures. So please note that this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. This should not be construed as a professional, financial, or investment advice or recommendation from the PSE. So before I proceed to the uh, uh, presentation or, or um, to, to introducing our resource speaker, I just have here a short video about uh, the basics of uh, the stock market. So yung what, why, and how of investing in the stock market. Two to three minutes lang ito. So please watch this. Filipinos are becoming more familiar with financial investments. Over the years, more and more individuals have started building their wealth by investing in stocks. In 2019, the PSE reported close to 1.23 million stock market accounts of which 97.7% are represented by retail investors. Two-thirds of retail investors belong to the younger age groups with an annual income of less than 500,000 pesos. Are you thinking of starting your stock investment journey? Here are the things you need to know about stocks. What are stocks? Stocks are shares of ownership in a company. When investors buy shares of stocks of a publicly listed company, they become a part owner of that company. As a part owner, investors become part of the company's growth and future profits. Why should investors consider investing in stocks? Several benefits come from investing in stocks. Stockholders can participate in the ownership of a professionally managed company. They are entitled to participate in the company's important decision-making process and to receive a share in the company's profits. Stockholders can make money in the stock market in two ways. First, through price appreciation, when investors buy low and sell high. And second, through dividends when a company distributes a share of its profits to its investors. Stockholders can enjoy the liquidity of their funds. They can buy and sell stocks during trading hours. Stockholders can expect that there will always be transparency in the market. The PSE has a state-of-the-art and fully automated disclosure system called PSE Edge. With its mobile app version, access to information is at your fingertips. How can investors invest in stocks? Investors can start investing in stocks through these three steps. 1. Open a trading account. At present, there are 126 active stock brokerage companies you can choose from. Visit the PSE website at www.pse.com.ph and select directory under trading participants to view the complete list. After choosing your stock broker, you may now open your trading account. Similar to the process of opening a bank account, a representative of your chosen stock brokerage firm will require you to undergo the Know Your Client or KYC process. 2. Find your account. Start thinking of what stocks you wish to buy or sell and discuss this with your broker. 3. Place your buy or sell orders. You can call or text your stock broker to place an order to buy or sell. Orders can also be placed directly online via an online trading platform. Now that you understand the basics of stock market investing, you can now start your investment journey to help you achieve your goals. So uh, let me introduce to you our first resource speaker this afternoon. She is a senior disclosure specialist um, from the Philippine Stock Exchange. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my colleague, Ms. France Alexandra Du Tom Wong. Good afternoon, Alex. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon, everybody. We're glad to have you with us and we're very looking forward to your presentation. Same here. I hope we all okay. learn together. Most definitely. Take it away, Alex. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. We would like to thank you for your time and interest in this briefing. We welcome this opportunity to give you a briefing on the salient PSE 
disclosure rules, and an overview of our online disclosure system, as this forms part of the PSE's continuing corporate governance activities in educating and assisting investors on the disclosure requirements, as well as the rationale behind these requirements. So again, I am from the Issuer Regulation Division of the PSE. Just to give you a brief background, our division is composed of the Listings Department and the Disclosure Department. The, this is, the Listings Department is in charge of the processing and evaluation of listing applications of companies. On the other hand, the Disclosure Department is in charge of monitoring compliance of listed companies with the PSE disclosure requirements in the processing and dissemination of corporate disclosures for public distribution. So this, in this slide is our outline for this afternoon. So let's move on. In relation to the trading of listed securities, it is the PSE's fundamental principle to ensure that corporate disclosures filed by listed companies are full or complete, fair, which means everyone has equal access, timely or prompt, and accurate and correct based on facts. The enforcement of all these is a part of our duties as a self-regulatory organization and as a market operator. And all these are in accordance with our securities laws or the securities regulation code and its implementing rules and regulations. The implementation of all these disclosure requirements is part of our duties in making sure that appropriate and timely disclosures are filed by listed companies. So why do we, we require such disclosures? Why are these important? Disclosures are essential for the conduct of a fair and orderly market to maintain the integrity of the market and to ensure that the market at all times is apprised of material information concerning listed companies and that no investor is disadvantaged by lack of access to material information. So let me share with you what corporate disclosures are. Corporate disclosures are the listed company's communication of information to its shareholders and the investing public in general. So there are two types of corporate disclosures, unstructured and structured corporate disclosures. Unstructured continuing disclosures are communication of corporate developments as they occur. The process of this, sorry, the purpose of this type of disclosure is to update the investing public on the activities, operations, and business of the listed company as they happen. These are the material information that must be immediately disclosed. Structured continuing disclosures, on the other hand, are the regular reportorial requirements that are submitted within specific timeframes, such as annual, quarterly, and monthly reports. The most important of these is financial reporting, which is the annual and quarterly finance financial state statements. These reports are required by the SEC and PSE to assure the public availability of continuing and adequate financial information on listed companies. All these disclosures help an investor in their investment decisions in determining whether to buy, sell, or hold their securities and in the exercise of their voting rights during stockholders' meetings. So we said earlier that listed companies are required to disclose material information. But what constitutes material information? Under the rules, material information is any significant information relating to the business and operations of the company that, if and when disclosed, would result in or would reasonably be expected to cause a significant change in the trading and or market value of the listed company securities. So this includes information relating to the listed company's financial condition, prospects, development projects, contracts, and other transactions or actions that may impact the issuer's business or operations. What are the standards and tests in determining material information? A material information meets the following standards, where information involves a material change or effect on the business, operations, and financial condition of the listed company necessary for the investors to appraise their position or standing, 
where such information is necessary to avoid the creation of a false market, which may influence the decision of investors, or where prices are manipulated based on erroneous information, and where such information is likely to have a significant effect or that which tends to induce or otherwise affect the trading activity and the market price of the listed securities. Material information which meets the standards I've discussed requires immediate disclosure. This is required to be disclosed to the PSE within 10 minutes from receipt of such information or the happening or occurrence of said act or event. All disclosures must be submitted to the PSE prior to its release to the news media. So why 10 minutes? It is the immediate basis for disclosure of material developments and the standard for as soon as possible. So shown on this slide are examples of material information that mandate prompt disclosure. So a list of material events can be found under the disclosure rules. This list is only indicative and illustrates types of events required to be reported immediately and does not comprise all of the situations. All disclosures submitted are reviewed and approved for uploading by the exchange. If everything is in order, the disclosure will be posted immediately for dissemination. In cases where disclosures are incomplete, inconsistent, or non-compliant, or will need further evaluation or review, the PSE will request the listed company to make the necessary clarification. So another salient requirement of the disclosure rules is the provision on selective disclosures. Selective disclosure is when a publicly listed company discloses material information to a person or a limited group of investors or market professionals as opposed to disclosing the information to all investors at the same time. As a general rule, listed companies are prohibited to disclose material non-public information to any person unless it is ready to simultaneously submit a disclosure to the PSE and concurrently make a widespread announcement to the public. Listed companies may, however, disclose material information to the following. When a listed company discloses to a person bound by duty to maintain trust and confidence, such as its auditors, legal counsels, investment bankers, or financial advisors, and when a listed company discloses to a person who agrees in writing to maintain the confidentiality of an information and who will not attempt to take advantage of it for his personal gain. Listed companies are required to establish and implement internal controls that will ensure that its directors, officers, staff, and any other person who is privy to the material non-public information will comply with this rule. This directors and officers must exercise caution in answering queries or interviews as the information may be given out, may not yet have been disclosed yet, or may give rise to speculation in the trading of the listed shares. So in, this, in the following slides, uh, they show the list of all structured reports required to be submitted and their respective deadlines. Any amendments to these reports will be submitted to the SEC, must also be filed with the PSE. So the following slides show the disclosure requirements on transactions of directors and principal officers of a listed company. The rule required issuers to disclose the direct and indirect ownership of directors and principal officers after the following circumstances. Upon listing with the exchange, upon election of a director or appointment of an officer, or any change in the shareholdings of directors and officers, whether acquisition or disposal. So the next section is what we call the blackout rule. This rule prohibits a director or a principal officer to buy or sell the issuer securities during the period within which a director or principal officer obtains a material non-public information up to two full trading days after the information is disclosed. When a director or officer has knowledge of a material non-public information, these covered persons must not engage in trading. The two-day trading period after 
gives a reasonable period of time for the information to be widely disseminated in the market first. This provision deters insider trading. The company's directors and officers should not trade at all if they possess material non-public information or in any of the following instances. When the company engages in a material transaction, when there is a material resolution for board approval, including the annual and quarterly financial results, and every time a material disclosure will be submitted to the exchange. So this slide shows a sample timeline of a disclosure filing and the trading prohibition for directors and officers. So week one is the start of negotiations for a merger. Hence, directors and principal officers are not allowed to trade from week one until week four, as they have knowledge of material non-public information. On the Monday of week five, the board approves the merger transaction and discloses the same to the exchange. Hence, directors and principal officers are still not allowed to trade on Tuesday and Wednesday, which is day one and day two after dissemination of the disclosure. They will only be allowed to trade on Thursday. So this next slide shows a sample timeline of a quarterly report filing and the trading prohibition for directors and officers. So the board approves or signs the SEC Form 17Q on Monday. However, the quarterly report is disclosed only on Wednesday. Hence, the directors and principal officers are not allowed to trade from Monday when they obtain material information until Friday, which is the second trading day after dissemination of the material information. The covered persons are only allowed to trade the following Monday. So just to give you a brief background, last June 2013, the PSE partnered with the Korea Exchange for the design and development of the PSE Electronic Disclosure Generation Technology, or the PSE Edge. This platform uses electronic templates which allow disclosure information to be easily integrated real-time upon release to the public in various systems, such as the PSE Edge portal, the mobile app, trading terminals, and systems of various data vendors. The PSE Edge is composed of three systems, the Edge Submission System, the Edge Management System, and the Edge Public Portal and Mobile App. The Edge Submission System is a web-based processing system that allows listed companies to submit corporate disclosures to the PSE through standardized electronic templates or forms. The information required in the electronic templates are based on the disclosure rules and Philippine securities laws. The Edge Management System is the system used by the PSE, the Capital Markets Integrity Corporation, or CMIC, to review, process, and disseminate submitted corporate disclosures of listed companies. This is also the system used by our SEC for the disclosures of the PSE as a listed company. Upon approval of submitted disclosures, the disclosures are posted on the EDGE portal and the mobile app. So the EDGE um, submission menu is the most vital function of the PSE EDGE submission system, because this is where listed companies may be able to create, modify, and review their disclosure and submit them to the PSE. So depending on the assigned user role, the submission menu has two submenus maker and approver. So the maker function enables the user to create and modify disclosures. For approvers, the user may be able to review disclosures created by the maker and has the authority to either reject or approve the disclosure and formalize submission to the PSE. So the system, the system administrator has both the maker and approver function. So this is the edge management flow Upon approval of submitted disclosures, investing public may view the disclosures through the PSE Edge portal. So the Edge portal is the dedicated online public platform for corporate disclosure dissemination. This displays all corporate disclosures, listing and disclosure notices, and other issuer-related information. So at first glance, the Edge portal distinctly classifies corporate disclosures as company announcements financial reports, and other reports. Company announcements 
are the unstructured disclosures, which are disclosures based on corporate acts, developments, or events relating to the operations and business of listed companies. Structured disclosures are the reportorial requirements submitted within specific timeframes. So in the EDGE portal, structured disclosures may either be under financial reports or other reports. Financial reports are the listed company's annual and quarterly reports, while other reports are the periodic SEC and PSE reportorial requirements, which include public ownership reports, um, beneficial ownership of securities, and others. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, we have in the EDGE portal uh, company announcements, which pertain to the unstructured disclosures, and the financial reports and other reports, which pertain to the periodical reports containing financial condition and results of operations of the listed companies. And for other reports, as mentioned, these would be the beneficial ownership reports, public ownership reports, and top 100 stockholder reports, um, just to name a few. So if you scroll down, other information that is displayed on the PSE Edge portal would be dividends and rights page. We also have here the halts and suspensions. There's also the market calendar link, the most viewed disclosures, and also exchanges notices. So the exchange notices are um, divided into two, specifically the listing notices or any listing related announcements from the PSE listings department and disclosure notices, which are the disclosure related announcements from the PSE disclosure department. So just to show you um, the listed company profile. So this shows um, company information of listed companies, specifically stock data, company information, directors and management, the financial reports, company disclosures, and dividends and rights. So information um, per, listed per listed company are all presented in one page. So just to show you this stock data and then company information provides a description of the listed company and security information. They also have the contact information there. For directors and management, we have here the list of the board of directors and the management officers. The financial reports tab shows um, the latest annual figures. And if you scroll down, it also shows the quarterly, the latest quarterly figures. Company disclosures contains all unstructured and structured reports of a listed company. And of course, one of the mo most important part, the dividends and rights page that will show the latest um, dividend declarations, whether it's cash stock dividend or stock dividend declaration. Okay, we also have um, in the left left hand side, we'll click on the dividend, dividends and rights page, which displays all the dividend information. And also the rights page information. We move on to the page on halts and suspensions. So you'll be able to view the different market actions and the execution dates per um, market action. Lastly, and I think this is very important to everybody, we have here the market calendar. This is to keep track of important dates in the market. So some examples are the X 
dividend and rights dates, schedules of stockholders' meetings and analyst briefings, and listing dates and public offer periods are also viewable on the market calendar. Okay, I'll go back to my presentation. Okay, so all information displayed in the PSE Edge portal are also available in the PSE Edge mobile application. The PSE launched the Edge mobile app to cater to the more tech-savvy investors. This program of the PSE fits well in our overall efforts to continue to enhance governance and transparency in the market. As fast-paced as the markets have become, we realize that providing access to critical information about investments will need to keep up. With this new mobile application, we have practically put information at everyone's fingertips. So the mobile app has nine main segments namely corporate information, company announcements, financial reports, PSEI company disclosures, dividends and rights, halts and suspensions, exchange notices, ETF, and other reports. The Edge mobile app is available in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. So that's it for my presentation this afternoon. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you very much, um, Alex, for that very uh, informative presentation. We re I really enjoyed watching the the uh, the PSE Edge uh, demo because honestly, I know I ko pa alam gamitin lahat ng uh, features ng Edge, and uh, I'm I'm inviting everyone, our participants, to please explore the PSE Edge. It's Correct. free for use. It's for everyone, and you know the information is made available para sa ating lahat. Okay, to help us with our investments, with our trading strategy. So, see, si Alex already showed us um, what corporate disclosures are. Ano yung mga klase ng corporate disclosure na kailangan nating bantayan, and of course, ano yung PSE Edge. Um, ano yung uh, mga features available sa PSE Edge. Now, moving on to our second presenter. Kaya naman ang magtuturo sa atin kung paano natin ma-analyze itong mga disclosures na to. Ano ba ang impact ng mga disclosures sa investments natin? How is it going to affect our investments, the stock price, the index, etc.? So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the Business Development and Market Education Section Head for the Mindanao Desk of First Metro Securities. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Roberto Marco N. Samson. Good afternoon, Roby. Thank you, Sir John. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for, for having me here. And I'm very excited to share uh, some information about how investors will be able to interpret and incorporate no, uh, these disclosures into their uh, trading and investing plans. So allow me to share my um, screen. Okay, so um, again, this is uh, Disclosures 101, Practices of an Informed Investor. And one question, no, one question that I want to answer uh, during this uh, portion of mine is this one. How do we relate disclosures to price action? Because uh, that's the most important thing. Now, we already understand via Mam Alex uh, the, 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 the background, the origin, and the value of disclosures. Now, what I want to talk to you about this afternoon is how can we relate or how can we use you know, these disclosures in order to make better investing decisions? Specifically, how do these disclosures affect price action because especially since a lot of you answered that you were already investing in the stock market um you might have noticed in in years past no in months past how certain disclosures can have an adverse uh, have a significant impact no on the movement of prices so that's what we want to understand better here this afternoon and but before we go there uh, just a quick review no just a quick review so that we will all be in the same footing um, typically, no, we have to remember, typically, 
stock price moves in response to changes in future earnings potential. Now, as we all know, there are a lot of different news out there. There's lots of different disclosures. There's lots of factors that could affect stock price movement. But at the end of the day, the one that um, has the biggest impact in the eyes of uh, a lot of investors is how a development, no, how a development, how a disclosure will affect the future earnings potential of a company, no, of a listed company. So with that said, if the change, if the development, or if uh, the disclosure favors better earnings in the future, you can expect that stock price will likely move higher. And of course, the opposite of that is that if the change or, or if the development or if the disclosure favors worse earnings, no, if the disclosure indicates that this will lead to lesser uh, net income for the company, it is likely that stock price will go lower. So that's something that we have to, kumbaga, we have to understand no? so that we will understand better kung paano ba natin pwedeng ma-interpret yung mga disclosures na lumalabas sa, sa PSE and uh, sa PSE Edge. So allow me to give you an example of that. So let's look at the stock price movement of Ayala Land. So this is a five-year chart starting in 2016. No? So just to give you an example of how earnings impact stock price movement, back in 2016, uh, Ayala Land posted a, a net income of 20, essentially 21 billion pesos, which was higher than their net income from 2015. And as a result, the stock price of Ayala Land went up by around 13%. So we can see here that uh, an increase in earnings no, and the future prospect of continued increase in earnings led to Ayala Land uh, earning 13% in, in one year, which is uh, very, very good. No? The following year, Ayala Land was able to increase, no? was able to improve on their earnings to the tune of 25 billion pesos. That increase resulted in an in another jump of Ayala Land stock price by about 24.55%. The following year, we will remember 2018 as the year in which um, the PSE somewhat peaked. No, that, that was the peak of uh, of the PSE. It went up by uh, 29. The net income of Ayala Land went up by 29 billion pesos. But you'll notice here that it actually didn't move that much. It didn't increase that much. It only went up by 0.38%, which is not a lot compared to previous years. And in 2019, once again, Ayala Land improved on their previous year's earnings to the tune of 33 billion pesos. But surprisingly, it went down. No? Stock price went down by around 7%. So you'll notice that uh, during the middle of the year, Ayala Land actually went up to as high as over 51 pesos per share. But by the time the year ended, uh, it was already down to around 42 something pesos. So you might be wondering, how did that happen? No? Why, why, how come their earnings improved, but their stock price didn't? If you remember, 2019 was the year in which um, the trade tensions between the US and China were prevalent. No? So it, uh, a lot of people, a lot of investors were watching out for it. And you can see there the effect of future earnings potential. So kahit pa maganda naman ang performance, no? even if the performance of Ayala Land during 2019 was better than 2018, because there were trade tensions that could possibly linger into 2020, investors were understandably um, somewhat apprehensive about buying more Ayala Land. And so they became more cautious, no? So they started selling because they expected that these trade tensions could lead to lower earnings in the future. And what happened the year after that? So I think we're all familiar with what happened last year, no? One of the most unfortunate events in human history. Uh, we were faced with a pandemic, no? COVID-19 pandemic, and it resulted in Ayala Land uh, posting a huge decrease in their net income from 33 billion to around 8.73 billion pesos. And as you can see, it resulted in another drop in stock price to, to about uh, another 9% drop. Now, 
In 2021, although things are somewhat improving no, with the vaccine rollouts, we have seen that the number of cases have been spiking recently, necessitating uh, the imposition again of certain of stricter lockdown measures. So right now, you can see here with the price performance of Ayala Land, things seem to be in a holding pattern. It's lower than where it was last year because of these developments. So we will see during the year no, if people will expect stock price to go uh, or if people will expect earnings to improve, which would mean that likely stock prices will move back up again. So I showed you this chart to help you understand that not only are we concerned with the actual net income being posted by these companies, but we also take into consideration the impact or the future earnings potential, which is something that will be uh, helped no, by understanding better the different um, disclosure uh, meanings. So again, uh, we, we already know, but disclosures are essentially for me, no, and as explained earlier, the best way, the best way to verify um, the veracity of the rumors, of the speculations, of the news that you will encounter and it is, again, uh, straight from the listed companies themselves. So we can treat it as official. We can treat it as correct. No? And again, uh, we all know how to navigate the PSE Edge system by now. So it's going to be very easy for us to know where to get these disclosures. So my job here for this afternoon is to just help you understand better the relationship between disclosures and price volatility. No, so in a nutshell, trading activity, price volatility is stoked, is fanned by the following. How expected is the disclosure? So uh, I have a lot of examples naman later no, that will uh, clearly depict this, uh, this uh, development. Aside from that, how widely covered is the disclosure? Because uh, we take into consideration consideration the the coverage of the disclosure because if it is widely covered or if a lot of people are already researching that particular company there tends to be less surprises no but if it is not a widely covered company and by extension the disclosures are not regularly monitored it has the opportunity to surprise us and yung surprise na yon yung 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 um impact ng mga surprising disclosures na yon can be felt with a higher volatility in price action. So, what is one way? No? What is one way to use um, the disclosures? So, one way is that it will help us confirm future potential of our particular company. So, one example of this is Cebu Land Master. So, this is lifted directly from the PSE Edge. So as you can see, it's a very, very good resource no, to really get us up to speed with what is happening with a particular company. So I summarized it for all of us. No? So essentially, this closure, which was uh, reported around March, I believe, no, of this year, um, the summary here is that CLI, or Cebu Land Masters Inc., said that their reservation sales were up in 2020. So this is a wonderful development kasi nga alam natin a lot of stocks no from all sectors essentially were affected negatively by the pandemic but uh, despite that CLI was one of the few companies that were able to actually increase their reservation sales pa so that's what's reported in the disclosure so following that logic if in the year of the pandemic if in the year of lockdown to sales, how much more this year, no? how much more in 2021 where it is expected that um, lockdown measures might be relaxed, no? people will start to have a better grasp of the, of the pandemic and so they will be more comfortable resuming their typical day-to-day -day activities. No? nag invest na ulit sila, they're starting to look for investment and uh, money-making opportunities. So because of this positive, no, because of this positive development and because of the positive connotation of this disclosure, there is an outperformance expectation for CLI, meaning 
it is uh, expected based on this disclosure that CLI has a very good chance of actually performing better in 2021 compared to last year. This is one reason why, um, despite the market being mostly down no, uh, since the January peak, CLI was up by approximately by about nine percent year to date now as of uh, earlier this week. And as you can see here in the chart, that's what the chart says. No, parang a lot of stocks were going down, but CLI because of the virtue of posting great performance in 2020 and positive expectations for 2021, it has managed to buck the trend of stocks going down and has managed to actually uh, perform positively uh, during this year. So dito natin makikita yung value of understanding a disclosure properly. The next one is that um, disclosures can be used to help verify rumors and news. So this is a uh, particular disclosure for Dito, no? so very popular stock, widely covered. And it, uh, according to this disclosure, no, um, there was an article released stating that Dito has pa had passed the technical audit. So as you can see from the disclosure, the PSE re requested clarification of this news report, and indeed. Dito, Dito, Dito Tel, no, or Dito CME Holdings confirmed the passing and the commercial launch of their services uh, the following month. So this was a disclosure back in February. So they confirmed that they would be launching last March, which they did. No? So na, na, na we verify natin. If we read about it in the news, if we are not sure, thankfully there is the, the disclosure system that will help us see whether the, the article is accurate, whether the article is um, uh, legitimate from that standpoint. No? And it will help us make better investing decisions. So apart from a short spike, no, apart from a short spike in the price of Dito, you can see that after this, this disclosure, stock price went down. So you might be wondering, bakit ganon? No? Bakit ganon? Uh, stock price went down, but the but the news was mostly positive. It's because, no, and I have another example for this later on, it's because this particular development was somewhat expected already by, by the general investing public. So if you'll remember, uh, Dito and the technical audit, the technical launch has been in the news since around July or August of 2020. So by then, since uh, most developments were positive no, regarding Dito, by the time that Dito released this news report, no, by the time they confirmed this, this development, a lot of people were already expecting that they would pass the technical audit. And so it was not as surprising. The news is positive, but it was not surprising. And so um, people actually, no, investors, the early investors actually took that as an opportunity to unload some of their shares. Okay, uh, uh, this is something that I wanted to show you para you'll understand that it doesn't always have to be limited to um, whether the news is good or bad. It has to, you have to also consider whether this is already old news or truly new news. So that's something that you have to uh, watch out for also. No? Uh, another way to disclosures is to get negative confirmation or to confirm that a news is indeed, indeed negative. So what do I mean by that? Let's take this uh, disclosure from SurePass, for example. So to summarize, the disclosure said that SurePass sells Yondo Inc. to Globe Telecom. And uh, they also stated the dissolution of Celeb Tele Technologies and Celeb Inc. No? So of course, given those developments, the PSE again requested additional information. And ultimately, if you read the whole disclosure, no? if you read the whole disclosure, you would see that there were bits of good news kasi nga, diba, in, in article, you know, they said that there will be an improvement in the net cash, cash position of the parent company. So some people could take that positively. But in a testament to how investors pay more um, respect, so to speak, to the impact on net earnings, they held on more to the news, no, to the report or to the disclosure that ultimately X expected net income to worsen by 26%. So what happened in the price actions of SurePass? So, so this is the, the shaded area is the time slice 
where the the disclosure happened. Uh, apart from an initial spike, no, apart from an initial spike which was also sold down intraday, the stock price of X, no, actually went down the following the next few days, the next few weeks because investors paid more respect to the fact that X reported that they expected net income to worsen by 26%. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters more to investors. Whether these developments will lead to higher or lower earnings in the future. Yeah, that's what happened with X during this particular uh, point in time, which was in uh, around September of 2019. Of course, if there's a negative confirmation, there's also the happy surprise naman. And that's what happened with Boulevard Holdings Inc. or B during this disclosure. No? So they said uh, during this disclosure that there was an approval of increase in authorized capital stock with a par value of 10 centavos per share. So by nature, no, even if um, the developments following the approval of an authorized capital stock of an increase in the authorized capital stock may not be felt immediately, usually people take it as more of a positive than negative. But in the case of BHI, aside from that, investors anchored com company value to the par value of 10 centavos per share. Kaya umakyat po yung presyo niya. Kasi back then, BHI was actually trading below par value. So it was it acted as sort of a reminder to investors that BHI was trading under par value. So what happened after that? So again, uh, the, the blue area indicates the time, the point in time wherein the disclosure was released. It actually rallied by around 50 to 60 percent in a span of um, two to three days, no, two to three trading days. So you can see the magnitude, no, the, the impact, because this was a surprising development. BHI is not a widely covered company. And so it tends to surprise people a lot more. So as you can see, even though it has retraced uh, its value a little bit, it's still hovering around the upper end of its recent price action, suggesting that people may still be confident in this particular company no? based, based on the chart. But we can see here that the initial rally was uh, instigated by this um, happy surprise from their disclosure. And um, of course, there's also the positive expectation. No? So one example of that is with ASEN, one of the more popular stocks, one of the more actively traded stocks in the stock market the past few years. And in this disclosure, essentially, um, this disclosure was in December of 2020. But if you remember, back in early 2020, ASEN already announced uh, a stock rights offer price of 2.37 pesos per share. No, So... 2.37 pesos per share. And then a few months later, toward the end of the year, they confirmed that they would indeed conduct the SRO with the price of 2.37 pesos per share. So as a result, as a result the follow-up disclo disclosure in December 2020 was not surprising. So why is it significant that we understand why it is surprising or not? Typically, po kasi, uh, when a company announces a the stock rights offer and if the stock and usually the stock right the sro price is going to be below the market price no so typically share prices track or follow the sro price especially if it is unexpected so if uh, around december of 2020 asen was trading at around six pesos per share and they they reiterated during this disclosure that the SRO price would be 2.37 pesos per share. Now, typically, when that happens, prices tend to go down kasi po lalapit yung presyo ng stock doon sa SRO price niya if the SRO disclosure was unexpected. But since it was already announced early in 2020, in this case, instead of going down, ASEN actually rallied to more than 65% in a matter of a few trading days. So dito po natin makikita yung uh, what we mentioned earlier, what we mentioned earlier when I said that um, the the unexpectedness or the expectedness of a 
of a disclosure also plays a role in how the people, the investing public will treat it. So in this case, it was not surprising that the SRO price would be lower. And so the investors, the investing public, essentially disregarded it. They didn't mind that it was lower. They believed that ASEN was a company worth investing in. And so despite that, they actually bought up ASEN because they wanted to be able to invest more at lower prices. So those are some examples. No? So essentially, um, those are some ways in which you can um, interpret the different kinds of disclosure. So of course, there are more types of disclosures uh, that you will encounter. But essentially, you have to circle back to what I mentioned earlier. Does the disclosure have a positive or negative effect on the future earnings potential of this particular company? So that's what you have to be able to answer. So regardless of what disclosure you are reading, you have to circle back to that you know, because you have to understand what the impact will be, whether positive or negative. So just a quick summary of what we discussed here this afternoon. Number one, Price moves in response mostly to changes in future earnings potential. So if it's positive, price will move will likely move higher. If it's negative, price will likely move lower. Number two, disclosures are the best place to confirm uh, the veracity of the news and speculation and rumors. So not Facebook, not anywhere else. So everything you read, uh, regardless of the source, no, it is best to confirm it in edge. Disclosures are taken positively or negatively depending on the earnings impact of the news. Volatility also increases based on how expected or unexpected it is. So not just whether positive or negative, you have to factor in whether it is something new, something out of the ordinary or essentially just a surprise no? or not. And lastly, Investors latch strongly to the disclosure based on the magnitude of impact on earnings. So what we mean by this is that um, if a company that is not that does not belong in the real estate sector suddenly says that their net income increased by a lot because they were able to sell up a parcel of land no, that had nothing to do with their day-to-day -day operations, with their core operations, Hindi siya positive, no? hindi, hindi siya long-lasting ang magiging effect niya dun sa perception or to the sentiment of the company because it is not sustainable. If they sell land now and they are not a real estate company, it is likely that they will not be able to generate that same income in the future. So sometimes those, those spikes are temporary. But if it is a development, no? if it is a development that has a significant impact to the long-term ability of the company to post future higher earnings, then it is likely that investors will hold stronger no, on that particular stock. And if the, what I mean by holding stronger is that they tend to add more, they tend to buy it, they are less, less likely to sell at the first sign of weakness, so stuff like that. So that's some things that we have to remember. No? So just in case, no, just in case you are excited to start investing or you want to, to improve your investing performance, uh, allow me to talk about uh, First Metro a bit, no. So I'm happy to let you know that um, aside from uh, using disclosures, you can also take advantage of research reports by different brokers, no, to supplement what you are reading from the disclosures. After all. Most research houses naman din tend to base their analysis on what is also disclosed. But at least you can confirm, you can um, have some different opinions that will help you make better investing decisions. Uh, aside from that, no, uh, if you have an account with First Meta Securities, you might want to join our Viber group. No? So that's where you can find daily financial market updates, alerts on new research reports and disclosures polls and contests, and even notifications on different events that we may have. And especially for those of you that are already watching over on Facebook, uh, please do feel free to like the official First Metro Securities page and also to join our official First Metro Sec group. 
And we also have a YouTube channel no, that you can use to, to further your learnings, which cover basic to advanced topics. And just in case that you are in the market no, for, for a broker that is digital, we're happy to, I'm happy to let you know that we have actually gone paperless, meaning the account opening, trading, funding, withdrawal, and even the statements are all digital. Now, all you have to do is just follow these three easy steps. No? So just visit our website, complete the online form, and upload your documents online. By the way, if you're going to if you're going to open an account with First Metro Securities, I would like to invite all of you. No? I would like to remind all of you when they ask you where did you learn about us to put in um, PSE as the account opening code in the event or seminar section. No? So that will help us know that you are an attendee of this um, special event. So with that said, um, Again, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for attending here this afternoon. I hope I was able to offer you some tips and tricks now, on how you can use disclosures because disclosures are actually very, very useful. A lot of expert traders use them. And so if you want to improve your trading performance, I think it's uh, in your best interest to regularly check PSE Edge now, on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, thank you very much. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to um, invite you to visit our corporate website for more corporate information. It's www.pse.com.ph. This webinar is all about PSE Edge. Again, for disclosures, our website is edge.pse.com.ph. And if you need more investing materials, please visit the PSE Academy website at www.pse.com.ph. If you need to get in touch with the PSE, our hotline is 632-887-64888. Or you can also email info at pse.com.ph please join our online community we are on facebook instagram youtube and twitter all right and of course download the pse edge mobile app um, information right at your fingertips and of course when there is an ipo please remember that the pse easy is the app for you let us know your thoughts please accomplish the post-webinar evaluation survey. The link is um, displayed at the screen right now. And I think um, my colleagues are typing it in the comment section in Facebook and at the chat box here in Zoom. So please, um, we want to hear your thoughts. We want to know how we can keep on improving our webinar sessions for you. And at the same time, kung ano pang gusto nyo yung topics ang i-cover namin, natin in the future, ha? basta investing-related yung topics na yan. So again, this has been a, a learning field afternoon delivered to you by the PSE's Market Education Department. I'm John Garcia. I'll see you all again next time. Have a good weekend, everyone.